you think you know what we're going to talk about. And welcome back to Three Fates Decide. It just sounds more dramatic that way. All right, so this week we are going to be talking about... But just when you least expect it, we changed the game. One Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I mean, we always celebrated Easter. Here's part of the Half-Blood Prince. So we're going to do another free talk, freestyle thing, no planned discussion. At the end of the day, only one thing matters. We decide. But we're going to hit the, the, the main highlights. That is the thing that we were saying back in that episode. A quick recap. Three Fates Decide podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Three Fates Decide. My name is Sam, and I'm here with my two co-hosts, Liz and Mary. Say hello, ladies. Hello. Hi. So for our episode today, um, we're going to talk about something that really we wanted to talk about last year, and we had kind of decided against it, and we even kind of questioned about doing it uh, this year, but it's definitely an important topic, at least for American history. Um, and that's the September 11th attacks. Obviously, the three of us are American. Liz and I live right outside of Manhattan. So, you know, we were all affected either emotionally, physically, you know, whatever, by these attacks. And uh, obviously, last year, we wanted to talk about it, but we didn't get a chance to because that was the 20th anniversary. So this year will be the 21st anniversary. And actually, by the time you listen to this, it'll be right before the 21st anniversary, I believe. Yes. So we thought it would be a good time to kind of go over what happened and what we, you know, remember. Uh, we were all old enough to have amazing memories. Um, we were all teenagers. Some older than others. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was a fresh I was a freshman in in high school. I was the I'm the youngest, but uh, you know, I not was, not too far behind you guys. Yeah, I was in college, but yeah. I was off that day. I was in college, but I was off that day. It was my second day of college, and during the entire initial attack. I was underground in the subway the entire time, and I had no idea anything happened until I showed up on campus. Yeah. 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 I, I remember I'd, ju- I'd, got, I'd just gotten up probably 15 minutes before, and then my aunt called me wanting to know where my parents <laughs> were. And I said, they're outside in the garden because they were, we were getting like our, some, some of the last vegetables for before the fall started. And she goes, a plane just just flew into one of the towers. Yeah, yeah. I was in third period algebra uh, when the principal came over the loudspeaker and told us what was going on. And uh, I didn't really understand what the like because at first he just mentioned the that a plane crashed into the World Trade Center. So I just remember sitting there going, how the heck do you fly into the World Trade Center? Like, they're two huge buildings. Like, how do you miss that? Right. Or or how do you hit them? Yeah, like, how do you, how? (laughs) Like, I don't understand how you do that. And so, like, I didn't take it as, like, oh, my God, okay, like, we're under attack. Until my next period, I actually had to go down to the library. And my teacher brought us into the library because her aunt worked in the World Trade Center. And I watched, by that time, both towers had been hit. And yeah. I watched the first tower fall live on TV. And I just remember sobbing. Just absolutely sobbing. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, for, for you know, anyone who's, you know, wasn't alive during that time or not from this country, though I'm sure most people have heard the story. So on September 11th, 2001, 19 uh, terrorists hijacked four commercial airliners that were all going from the Northeast to California. And Mm -hmm. two of the flights hit the World Trade Center, which is the Twin Tower, which was the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. Uh, They were about 17 minutes apart. Both of those planes came from Boston. And then uh, American Airlines hit the Pentagon in 
Arlington, Virginia. And then one and crashed in Pennsylvania. One crashed in Pennsylvania that came from Newark Airport, which is the airport that I go at. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the they believe that one was either going to the Capitol or the White House. So, but the passengers basically fought back and tried to gain control and they crashed the plane. So, very, very sad. I actually would love to go out to that uh, United... 93 memorial out there i hear it's absolutely beautiful uh, i have been to the memorial site in lower manhattan i haven't gone to the museum yet but i want to i heard that that's like hauntingly beautiful it is uh, but i ha- i have gone to the memorial which again is it's the footprints of the buildings and even that like y- you just realize like you're standing on hollow ground you know, like it's just so. It's 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 eerie almost, but you know, like just like a mass grave. It's but it's the what what they did with it was yeah. perfect because I just remember when they were planning on building the Freedom Tower, everyone was, you know, upset because if you build it on the same land, like you're building it on a burial ground, so many people are never found and are one with that earth. So I think what they did with it is is you know amazing and i'm glad that that's what they did they kept the footprints of the building they made it waterfalls and they have all the names of everybody uh that passed away the total of victims for that day was 2977 victims um and everyone whether they were in the planes uh even the ones from the pentagon anyone that passed away that day are on that memorial in new york city so, yeah it is very nice yeah yeah the museum is also um very good actually and um i guess one of the more well i mean like obviously all the exhibits in there are pretty haunting in their own way but i think for me i think one of the more haunting things was actually um they there's a section where they play audio recordings of people um leaving voice messages trying to get 911 i mean to, i mean this just for me personally mm-hmm. i kind of feel like that is oh. a little bit is the most haunting thing because you're probably listening to some of these people say the last some of the last things they have left to say before the end yep you know so yeah definitely it's uh, i just you know i'm one of those people that like i watch the stuff on like the history channel every year and things like that because it's just you know it it's something that i'll never forget and i don't know i just that's just something that i do is is you know watch all the different documentaries that they have and stuff like that and for a while i would watch like youtube videos and the ones with the uh, voicemails and stuff like that. And I just, there's one that I can just picture this guy. He's literally just begging with 911 to please come and get him because the smoke is so bad and they can't breathe and whatever. And then you hear a rumble and you hear the guy scream and the line goes dead and it's when the building collapsed. Yeah. And it just like, I watched it once and I just remember like crying because I was just like, oh my God, I just listened to this guy die. like. It, it's yeah. just, oh my god, so yeah. so bad. It was. Oh, it still yeah. sends chills down my spine. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I just remember, you know, so many kids were taken out of school because, as I mentioned, mm-hmm. I I live in New Jersey, and I live very close to New York. I used to be able to see the Twin Towers from my town. In fact, I can see even, you know, obviously on a very clear day, I can see the New York skyline from my town. I mean, it's in the distance, but you can see it. So like I see from my driveway, I can see the lights every 9-11. They do the the Twin Tower lights and I can see them from my house and, you know, things like that. So I, I am, you know, very close. My area was greatly affected. Actually, a girl from my class 
lost her father that day. He worked for Counter Fitzgerald. Mm. Um, so, you know, and like, you know, a lot of people would like for neighboring towns would park in, you know, the parking lots around town to get the bus. And for weeks afterwards, there were so many cars that hadn't been picked up. Uh, you know, my my grandfather was a part of uh, my fire department and they all went down to the train station with like hoses ready to hose people off as they got off the trains. It, it's just, you know, it, it was it was just so devastating. And even, you know, the part that is by uh, so we're part of the, the Raritan Bay, which leads toward, you know, either the ocean or into New York. And um, we had a lot of the, the soot and the dust and stuff like that come, you know, from wind, from the wind and stuff come over uh, for, for a while after that. It was just, oh, it was, that. you know, and, and even still to this day, like I look at the New York skyline and I'm just like, it's just not as pretty, <laughs> you know, like just those twin towers were just so, <sighs> yeah, but. Um, it just, yeah, it, it's been, it, it, anyone that's from the area and all that stuff where, you know, that were, that were affected and, and thankfully, you know, personally, I was not affected by anyone. Right. I didn't lose anybody that day, but you know, it, it's still just, it's crazy. It's, I still can't believe that it happened, like that we were alive during something like this like you read in your history books about pearl harbor or yeah you know whatever and to know that like this happened and like this was worse than pearl harbor because this was an attack on like regular citizens not military like yeah. they they went after normal citizens which was just just wrong yeah but they don't care they didn't nope. care they still don't care Nope. They want us all dead. Yeah. And I mean, and we're not saying that it's all people of the Muslim faith. We're not saying that at all. No, no, no. We're saying it's the very, the very niche. um, Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda community of the. the, Yeah. That it's a very, yeah, the the very, very small bubble of these people, uh, Mm -hmm. of, of them. Of the faith. Yes. Yes. Because actually the Muslim faith is extremely peaceful. Uh, It's a very peaceful faith. I know, you know, I have multiple people that I know that are Muslim. And it's just, it's a very peaceful faith. And, and, you know, unfortunately now in this country, it has a bad, leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths because of these extremists. But it's, it's not the religion at all. At all. I don't blame no. Muslim people, like people of, the, of that faith. Like I, that's not, no. <laughs> that's not on them. Right. And that that's, that's, that's where a lot of people had trouble um, separating the two mm-hmm. because they're for the longest time, they just lumped everybody that was of the Muslim faith into the same, into the same group. And it's not that at all. And I never agreed with it. I have, we actually have a doctor who, he's not even a Muslim. He's a Sikh. Um, he yeah. was a doctor, but he, but he still wore a turban, you know, mm-hmm. as part of his, as part of his religion. And right after it happened, you would see him sitting in the hospital cafeteria with a baseball cap on instead. Oh. Because he was sca- because he was so scared to wear his turban, which has absolutely nothing to do with with anything other than it's that's that's the headpiece that he wears because that is what they do in their religion, right? You know, you know that's right. I have a, a doctor that I used to work with in my old practice that I was in, mm-hmm. and he was same thing. He was a Sikh. He wore a turban. Nicest guy ever. Yes, very, very and nice. I just remember when I first kind of started working there, 
you know, I was a medical assistant. I'd bring a patient in Mm -hmm. and I would, you know, okay, you're going to see this doctor. And one patient asked me if he was like, you know, if he was good, like, and, and not like, is he a good doctor? But like, you know, was he, uh, she's like was implying like was he like okay and i looked at her i was like yes i was like he's indian like yeah (laughs) but even if he wasn't like really right right that has absolutely nothing to do with any of it because i mean you have to it thankfully is getting it's getting better but i i and all three of us can admit the fact that americans can be very prejudiced and very racist Mm-hmm. especially towards other religions, other races. And a lot of us the major the vast majority of us do not are do not agree with with that. Unfortunately, what you you tend to you tend to hear the the worst the yeah. the worst subsects of America and Americans. I promise we're not all like that. I may <laughs> be country, I may be hillbilly, but I'm not like the the redneck hick what stereotypical what you what you're thinking i promise i'm not like that (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean also another thing was that people are forgetting that among the victims are also muslims too so you know this isn't like yeah i mean people of all faiths all races all nationalities were affected by this yeah yeah it wasn't just it wasn't just your typical white american that was affected it wasn't right so and i think a lot of people forget that yeah and definitely a lot of countries got affected too because yes you know a lot of the companies in those buildings are like international companies where You'll have situations where, like, maybe somebody from, I don't know, like, say, the London office is, like, stationed, you know, in the New York office for a few weeks or whatever on a project. And then they should have been going back home, you know, next month or whatever. And then this happens. You know. Yeah. No, it it, it affected the world. You know, obviously not just the U.S. Obviously the U.S. was affected the most because it was an attack on the U.S. But mm-hmm. it definitely, I mean, it was the first time all flights in and out of the U.S. were grounded. There was not a plane in the sky for the longest time. The yeah. longest time. And yeah. I just remember, so my dad left. He went out to... I could think uh, the state of Washington and mm-hmm. he was actually supposed to leave on nine 11 and he left on the 10th instead. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, Oh my God, like he could have been on one of the planes, but the plane that they chose was going to LA. So it wouldn't have been his plane. anyway. But anyway, right. But, but he, still was, like- he was, he was, Oh my God, it was terrifying. He was stuck out there for at least a week trying to like get back home. And he got on one of the very first flights allowed to fly. And my mom asked him, like, are you sure you're, like, you feel okay to fly, like, after everything that's happened? And my dad said, he was like, there's probably not a safer time to fly in the U.S. than right now. And it's true, like, ever since 9-11, like, security has beefed up so much at airports. And it's actually sad that it took something like this to happen, but it just showed how lax airport security was in the U.S., Unfortunately. Yeah. So. And they knew it. They, you know, like they, they used our weaknesses against us. And it's not like we didn't know that the World Trade Center was a target. Granted, you know, I don't think we ever expected them to fly planes into it. But no. They did bomb it in 93. Yes. So we knew it was yeah. a target. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of 93, here's the here's the crazy thing. So my brother um I think I may have mentioned on a past episode I have an older brother, but 
The crazy thing is that my brother managed to avoid um, the worst of these both attacks. Um, because when 93 happened, he was actually in college and he was interning at a business at a company in one of the towers. And he actually requested that day off from his internship because I think it was close to like midterms or something like that. Or he had like some kind of project. So he was like, oh, I need you know, the day off to deal with schoolwork. So he wasn't there. And then car bomb. Um, and then for 9-11, he was working in the World Financial Center, which for those of you who have never, ever been to the World Trade Center area, um, it's not just the two towers. There's like multiple buildings in a complex where, like, one building would be one world trade, two world trade, seven world trade, that sort of thing. So he was actually working for a different company in the in the um, financial center. So he's, like, right across the street from the towers, and he could hear the boom from when the plane hit. But where his office was located, you couldn't immediately see the damage that happened mm. um i don't remember if he and his co-workers actually saw the second plane hit but they definitely saw a fireball coming out from the other side where the plane you know f basically like crashed through and flew out so mm -hmm. um yeah. that was when they were like he was like you know what i think we should leave so he managed to convince a couple other co-workers to come along with him, and he actually walked from his building all the way to Chinatown, which, for again, for those of you who have never been to New York and you're not overly familiar with the geography, it's like maybe, depending on how fast you walk, it's like maybe 20 minutes or so to walk from, yeah. from where that is to... Mm -hmm. The area that would be considered part of Chinatown. And the reason why he walked over there was because we have a great, we had a great aunt, my, my dad's aunt, actually. She was alive at the time and she had an apartment in Chinatown. So he walked over to her place to kind of like settle down for a bit and from there figure out how to come back home in Queens. Because, you know, we, we're, because like, we live in Queens and we're completely separate borough from where all this craziness is happening. Mm -hmm. So, because like by this, by the time he got there, he was already figuring out that like everybody is trying to leave, you know, so yeah, it's going to be completely. Leaving Manhattan was a nightmare. Right. And, you know, he already had a pretty good idea that like the subways were going to be either stopped or completely packed with people trying to leave so he figured if i just stay here for for a bit maybe it'll clear up later and i can try to go home and the crazy thing also is the fact that like you know while this was all happening i as as i mentioned earlier in the, towards the beginning of the episode like i mentioned it was my second day of college at the time my dad was still working oh Oh, my dad also missed out on on all this because literally a week before the attack, the the firm he was working at, because my dad my dad was an HVAC engineer, his company actually did a project in the towers a week earlier. Like there was like a meeting or something up there. So my dad could have been one of the people that got trapped up there if this had been a week earlier or his meeting was that day you so. hear about that those kinds of stories like how many people were late to work or it just happened that like they were on vacation that week or like in the, in your dad's case he was working on a project and it ended the week before and stuff like that like so many people that lucked out of not being in the buildings 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, so since so my dad's firm is located in Midtown, and I was at Fordham University, and I was in the Upper West Side in the Lincoln Center campus at the time. So my mom knew exactly where my dad and I were. And of course she knows where my brother works. So of course she's worried, like where, where's Dennis? Like, where's my, where's my son? And of course other people in our family were aware he worked down there too. So, so many relatives, so many people were like calling my mom's house. Like my mom was like calling our house and my mom had spent the entire morning answering the phone, like trying to explain like, okay, I know where, I know where he is. He's fine. He called from, you know, great auntie's apartment earlier saying that he's there and he's going to camp out there for a few hours until he can figure out how to get, come home. I mean, like ev literally everyone was calling, like even like my relatives in Hong Kong were calling because you know, the attack was in the morning, but over there, it's like prime time TV hours. You know, it's like 12, 13 hour difference. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night. So, you know, new evening news was interrupted reporting, hey, this thing happened in the U.S. You know, and of course, my uncle was especially worried because not only did he know my brother was working there, but his daughter... <laughs> also works downtown and he was trying to figure out where where's my daughter i don't know where she is now mm -hmm. i mean it's utter chaos really that morning that's what it was it was chaos 100 percent. and for you know uh, th just trying to call people like cell phones and stuff like that it half of the time the calls didn't go through because either a so many people were trying to reach out and B, a major antenna that was on the uh, the North Tower went down. Yeah. So, like, trying to make phone calls and stuff like that on cell phones, which, I mean, back in 2001, our cell phones weren't that technologically <laughs> sound. They weren't great. <laughs> <laughs> um, they weren't great. I think we yeah. were still ro rocking Nokia's at that point, weren't we? Yep. Uh, yes, yeah. we were. And uh, so, you know, it, it was a disaster. And then, yeah, trying to get out of Manhattan, like, you know, my my best friend's mom and my trainer, actually, his dad, his my trainer's father worked in the World Trade Center, was there that day. And um, he he got out, but he was up there in the South Tower. And when the North Tower got hit, you know, they evacuated the South Tower. And then they were like, oh, you know everything's fine. It's the North Tower. You can go back up. And he was like, no. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and, but he trying to get home. I mean, the bridges and tunnels were closed. They closed the Lincoln, they closed the Holland. So if you were trying to get into New Jersey, you couldn't trains, you know, the path train from New Jersey into New York closed, like, because they didn't know where else they were going to attack. So it's like they kind of, they shut down all entrance and exits from the city. And um, a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen the, the pictures of people walking across the Brooklyn Bridge and like no cars were able to get through because of the amount of people that were just walking across the Brooklyn Bridge, which is on the other side of the city it's on the, the east side of the city compared to where the World Trade Center was. And it, it's just like, you know, but like my, my friend's mom and, and my trainer's dad both had to go into Brooklyn and try and find a way to get through over into New Jersey. It was, it was just craziness, craziness. And like my, my best friend's mom works up in like Rockefeller Center, but like they just sent everybody home. Like at that point, no one was going to work that day, you know, yeah. like, you know, it, you couldn't help but freak out over, over everything. And I, yeah, it was, chaos is the perfect word for it. It was just absolute pandemonium just everywhere. everywhere. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I remember, like I said before, I was in college and I was in the Upper West Side. And I was basically stuck on campus for at least four or five hours uh, because the subways were, the subway system was completely shut down. And it wasn't until, like, I guess after two, maybe around three in the afternoon, it, word got out on campus saying that, oh, they're starting to run the trains again. But obviously, it's only trains that can run, you know, between part of lower Manhattan upwards and, you know, within Brooklyn and stuff like that. So then I was able to go home. But, you know, until then, like, I was basically stuck on campus and, you know, I was just, like, talking to some of my friends and some of my classmates and, like, we're all just trying to make sense of what the hell just happened because, you know, we're just, a f we're, like, a few miles away from where the attack happened and, you know, if you were looking out of a window from, like, you know, one of the upper floors of the campus building you could probably see the smoke and everything but it still somehow didn't quite feel real yet it's it's reality it, it's a new reality we we're gonna have to deal with and you know i'm sure you probably remember some of this as well sam you know whenever you had to come into the city for whatever reason but for months afterwards it was very scary trying to live life again in mm -hmm. a huge busy city like New York because I would remember I would have to start adding an extra half an hour on my travel time because at any given moment the train I'm on or the train line I'm on could have a delay because somebody would report in something suspicious and the police have to investigate it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was crazy. It, it was a crazy time because again, it, it was just it, it, people were scared. We were just violated in the worst possible way, and all you kept thinking was, "Are they going to strike us again? Like, you know, what's going to happen? Like, you can't trust anybody." And it's like, yeah, it's like the whole "see something, say something," which you still hear all over the place. Like when you go on trains and, and buses and, you know, you're on the subway and stuff like that. If you see something, say something. If you see someone leave a bag, like, you know, don't, you know, get get police or whatever. But like, yeah, after 9-11, like, whoa. That was because you just couldn't help but be scared. You just didn't know. You didn't know what was going to happen. And like you said, New York is so busy. There's a reason why it's called the city that never sleeps because it really never sleeps. Like, it's it's crazy. Yeah, that was that was a scary time. Yeah, it, yeah. I I I still remember. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're always on. Not only are you on the lookout for anything strange happening, but you're also having to really think about like, well, how long is it going to take me to get to wherever I need to go and you and like I said before you had to time it so that you gave yourself extra time to make sure that in the event you got delayed because of police investigation which of course they always leave it very vague mm -hmm. but um you you would have some wiggle room in case you got delayed because of that and you know if you were managed to show up early, then hey, you showed up early. But yeah, that's just the common thing you had to do back then. And it's kind of been a, a habit now, honestly, thinking ahead because now you have train delays for other reasons these days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and like Lower Manhattan was so... It was, you know, it's it's such a beautiful part of the city, you know, like especially like where the World Trade Center is. And like if you go down a little bit further to toward, you know, like Battery Park and just downtown and it's, you know, an older part of the city. The streets are very, very tiny and a lot of cobblestone streets. It's such a I always just found lower Manhattan just so beautiful, you know, and, and I just 
it was it, it was like it's like scarred you know and I just remember you know you saw all those pictures of people trying to find their loved ones for ever I mean years after and they still had the flyers up I mean I, I can't even remember when they finally just took them down but it was just so sad just people just putting flyers after flyer after flyer after flyer trying to find their family members and you know because especially like the, the couple of weeks after you didn't, again, it was the unknown. You didn't know if anyone was still, you know, who was still under the rubble. Obviously they know people were under there, but like, are, you know, are they going to be able to get to them? And, and, you know, people who were lost, did, you know, were they just like misplaced somewhere and, you know, they're trying to come out and, and, you know, so it was just afterwards, it was very, you know, every a lot of questions up in the air, and uh, it was just, yeah, it was, it was an uneasiness um, around around the area um, that I can I can remember. Um, the one I'm not going to call it a pro, but something that did come out of it is, and it. it will most likely never happen again. The U.S. did definitely come together as a whole and, like, stand together. That was probably the last time the U.S. as a people came together. Yeah. You know, and and felt united. And as sad as the situation was, it was also beautiful to see you know, where we f- we weren't fighting over the stupidity of politics and whatever. And, and we were one. We were all Americans. And that was, you know, that. And that'll never happen again, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, uh, I- not that I want another 9-11 to prove that point. I don't, I don't prove it. I don't want to see any proof. I just, you know, at this point. But that was one thing that kind of came out of it minus you know the the stupidity of people um with with muslim people and stuff like that a lot of mosques were attacked and stuff like that afterwards but um besides those idiots that that did that the the bulk of the u.s actually came together and uh you know united under the fact that we all felt the same way you know we all felt violated and and you know scared and angry there's a lot of anger but yeah i can remember you know going into like manhattan or whatever especially like lower manhattan and like you know going down the west side highway right past where the world trade center was you know afterwards and and just seeing like the the rubble get less and less and less i mean they cleaned that out very quickly it was cleaned out for the first anniversary, if you remember, because they actually had yeah. the first anniversary down in Ground Zero. Right. Yeah. And uh, my grandfather actually got to go to that ceremony. He wore his uh, his fireman's uniform, and he represented uh, our fire department because they asked like everyone from the fire departments in the area come down and he got to be the representative and he got to go down into ground zero and stuff like that but that was good yeah yeah and every year i mean they still have the ceremonies where they read all the names and uh the times that the uh, lights hit they do the moment of silence ring the bells and stuff like that but so many kids who will never know their parents and, and you know it's just sad yeah. it's it's just so sad so so sad so and many all the lives first responders lost. yeah so many lives lost over over something so needless you know yeah. it, it it didn't need to happen there was no there was no need for them to do what they did no. other than they were they 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 hated us they they still hate the country as as a whole and so many people 
needlessly lost their lives to absolute chaos and madness. Yep. And, uh, you know, I applaud all those first responders, those firemen and, and police officers and EMTs that walked into those buildings. Yes, definitely. I mean, you want to talk about heroes. Like, it's just... Mm. Yeah. You know, um, I was just kind of thinking earlier, Sam, like about how you were talking about your the story about your dad. I was just suddenly remembering about how there's been a lot of different works done and inspired by what happened. And one of the most obvious ones is Come From Away. Yes. Yes. The Broadway show. Which I've never actually seen it. I haven't either, but I've heard great things about it. I mean, my boss, who doesn't like musicals, loved it. Um, but it's basically based off of the true story of this flight that had to land in a small town in Canada, I think. Yeah, I think it was Nova Scotia. M- yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Nova Scotia. And uh, they had to park it. And wait until the the u.s uh skies opened up again because when i tell you there was no planes in or out of the country everything was grounded not just around new york everywhere everywhere the faa grounded all planes all planes Mm -hmm. and it was for a long time it was for days days before you could get a flight anywhere and especially i mean and that even then like when they first like when they started to allow you to fly again it was in small doses it was in small doses and that affected the entire world like i remember i used to watch this show on youtube about uh an airline in england and uh it was like you know like a reality type thing and on 9-11, the amount of people that flipped out because they couldn't get flights to the U.S. And, you know, what the, like they would like the people would be like, do you understand what's happening in the U.S. right now? And they'd be like, well, it's not happening here. So why can't I go out? You know, why can't I get on a flight? Because the U.S. shut down. <laughs> like the whole country shut down. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. But speaking of, you know, works that have been inspired, a couple of movies have been made. Um, World Trade, which had Nicolas Cage, and he was the Port Authority cop that got trapped underneath and then rescued. Uh, There's Flight 93, which is obviously about United Flight 93. And then I I just found out... I have it. I have not watched it. That's awful. Uh, I, I just, I can't bring myself to watch it. It's, yeah, it's sad. Even though you know what happens, you know, it's not like a spoiler alert or anything, but. Uh, yeah, but it's yeah, just, but knowing, knowing what that happen, it happened. Yeah, knowing that it happened to real people. Yeah. And it's not, and it's just knowing that every single person, the real person is dead, is yep. just like, yeah. Yep. Just kind of, it's like I just can't bring myself to watch it. I just can't um, do it. I, I get it. And then apparently in 2017, a movie called 9 11 was made. And it was uh, with Charlie Sheen and Whoopi Goldberg and Louise Guzman and, and you know, a couple of other people. It, it's got terrible reviews. Uh, I never had even heard of it. But it's basically five people find themselves trapped in an elevator during the September 11th attacks. I don't and, even remember this either. Yeah, I, I had never heard of it, but it's a 4.3 rating on IMDb, so that just tells you. Well, that just tells me that uh, it, it, it was not good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But I'm sure as time goes on, more movies will come out about it because it was such a 
you know, historical moment. Um, yeah. But like, I'm, I'm actually shocked. It's been almost 21 years and there hasn't been a movie about everything that happened. Yeah. I mean, like we were comparing earlier to things like Pearl Harbor. There's been plenty of movies about that and the aftermath. Yeah. Over the years, so yeah, I'm I'm honestly shocked that Hollywood hasn't done that because they, you know, they don't usually care about <laughs> waiting about that stuff. I mean, obviously, movies have been made, so it just that kind of proves the point. But like, I'm I'm just shocked that they haven't done that. Like there wasn't more. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, there's. I mean, I'm thankful because you know the victims' families and stuff don't need to see that. But yeah, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But yeah, that 9/11 one. Like, I I almost want to see it just to see how bad it is. But at the same time, I think it's going to just really piss me off. So it's probably better. Yeah, it's just what I was thinking. It's like I think it's probably better that I don't ever see that movie. Thanks for listening, everyone. Catch us next time and see what we're going to talk about. Because the three fates decide.